Well, hi again all my vintage dirt bike loving YouTubers and I hope you're all in the very best of health in these unprecedented times that we find ourselves living in. Now thanks to you all for your support of my online YouTube channel and for revisiting once again as we check out more off-road motocross vintage iron. Now in my next selected clip we're going to take a look at a Japanese machine that was universally accepted as certainly one of the top race bikes of its time. So I hope you will hang around with me for the next few minutes as we take a look at John Porteous's CR480 on the Twin Shocker. Now this featured machine was John's race bike for the 2018 racing season. And although John secured some decent results on this bike in that year, he has since moved the bike on and sold it to another owner. Now already you more than likely have guessed that this is not a fully original looking CR480 and you'd be completely right in that assumption as uh, this bike is a bit of a twin shock hybrid as it's made from a collection of particular parts but is still essentially a twin shock eligible racer. Now starting with the frame which is actually a chassis from a 1980 Honda which uh, has undergone a bit of fettling to enable it to take that big 480 engine. Now as far as I'm aware John never did any of the modifications to the bike so I don't have specific details about what was done to the frame although it may have uh, been done by the previous owner who actually uh, put the bike together. But nevertheless the bike still has the air-cooled Honda motor, the twin shock rear suspension and drum brakes which in the UK makes this bike eligible as a twin shock race machine. Now John's bike has a substantial pair of billet alloy triple clamps on his Honda and these look very heavy duty although these 45 millimeter front forks are not Honda items but are actually from a later model Suzuki. Now from what particular model of Suzuki I'm not entirely sure although these uh, big 45mm stanchions will be able to cope with anything on the track that this bike will ever come across. Now the front twin leading shoe drum brake is almost certainly again part of the Suzuki front end and although not as good as a more modern hydraulic disc brake it should have enough stopping power to at least slow this big Honda down slightly if you needed to make a turn. Now as I mentioned the frame is from a 1980 bike but this big lump of a 480 engine is taken from a 1982 CR 480 model. Now I'm sure you don't need me to tell you how good these 480 engines are as these are still accepted as one of the best motocross motors that Honda ever built. Now the fuel for this big Honda motor is fed through this Kian flat slide carburetor and uh, reed valve block. But the motor is a 472cc single cylinder two stroke with a bore of 89mm and a stroke of 76mm. Now ignition was by an electronic CVI unit or capacitor discharge ignition unit if you want to get really technical. Now the bike had a four speed gearbox and the standard uh, wet oil cooled uh, multi plate clutch. Now these 480 engines put out about 52 horsepower and were uh, just basically ballistic missiles on two wheels. Now when you put the right rider on board one of these rocket ships there were not many bikes that would pass you on the racetrack. Now although this bike's rear swing arm looks for all the world like it's custom made for this bike, it's actually a swing arm taken from a CRF 450 Honda which of course 
has been modified to enable it to take a pair of twin shocks at the rear rather than its original uh, mono shock unit but it's perfectly suited for this bike because this box section alloy is super strong and has virtually no flex which is great for feedback to the rider when used on bumpy racetrack now if you're going to fit a rear suspension system to your new bike then it's always a good policy to fit the best you can afford and luckily for John his bike came fitted with these top of the range Olin's piggyback shocks. Now these are excellent shocks fully tunable to the rider's weight and height and track conditions and of course fully rebuildable for maintenance and servicing whenever required. Now the big Honda's fuel tank uh, looks like a tank from something like a CR250 Honda or a other similar machine and uh, decked out in these motocross Fox graphics it certainly looks a part. Now as far as I was aware these bikes would have came fitted with a plastic airbox originally although someone has gone to a lot of trouble to fabricate this very nice aluminium replacement airbox which uh, I have to say is a big improvement over the original. But maybe the upgraded airbox was to allow more air fuel mixture into this gas guzzling monster Honda motor because uh, when this bike gets into full flight and working hard she certainly likes a drink. Now as you would expect from a bike that's uh, a bit of a hybrid there will be a few non-original parts fitted on this machine and this fresco expansion chamber is one such replacement part. Now whether this is an improvement over the original Honda item I'm not entirely sure but uh, coupled up with this very nice alloy tailpipe the whole system just seems to fit this bike perfectly. But if you were ever thinking of building your own hybrid twin shock dirt bike and you were trying to decide which power plant to use in your new machine, these 82 480 Honda motors were just a great uh, little motor. But don't get me wrong, these bikes were for your serious open class racers and if you wanted something to ride around the track with your mates on a Sunday afternoon then this is certainly not the bike for you. Because when you snapped that throttle back on one of these big Hondas you were certainly going places in a hurry. And if you were not used to the power delivery of these machines then two things were going to happen. She was going to either throw you off the back of the bike or you were going to scare yourself shitless with the awesome power that these bikes could produce. But despite that, the original builder of this bike appears to have got all his initial calculations spot on by starting with the 1980 frame which was light and strong and then fitting a stronger light aluminium swing arm that would cope with the pounding from both those twin shock Olin units. And then of course fitting the beefed up front end suspension from Suzuki and uh, then topping everything off by adding that fantastic Honda motor. But in my personal opinion, although the bike is not a fully original race bike, the machine's builder has picked the best of the parts to make what I think is a very competitive and purposeful twin shock race bike and well done to him for doing it. But these were just a couple of pictures I grabbed of John on the racetrack during 2018 and throughout that particular season John told me that the bike was very reliable and that there were no major mechanical issues with the bike whatsoever and he did enjoy his time riding the bike and owning it. But basically this just goes to show what you can put together with a little thought and a bit of planning and of course the right parts for the job. So anyway, that's John Porteous's race bike from 2018. Now I still have lots more machines to feature on my YouTube channel, so I do hope you'll continue to subscribe and return to view more of these superb old race bikes. Okay, until next time, please continue to be safe and look out for yourself and others until we check out more Vintage Iron here on Classic Dirt Bike TV.
This video was brought to you in association with VMX Magazine, your number one publication for classic, vintage and off-road motorcycles. Just visit their online website for more information.